the purity of fresh morning dew, hopes of childhood, sweated labor of sons of soil, optimism of a community, all unified by a large-scale agro-industrial enterprise, have resuscitated a regional economy and built a flourishing community in the eastern province of Sri Lanka. The history of Gal Oya sugar industry goes back to the early days of independent Sri Lanka when the government started an ambitious Gal Oya Valley development project. Gal Oya is symbolic of the new Lanka. May it obtain fulfillment speedily and herald the progress of our march to its self-sufficiency. Envisioned the Right Honourable D.S. Senanayaka, the father of modern Sri Lanka. Galloya Sugar was the most massive, vertically integrated agricultural and industrial complex ever to establish in Sri Lanka. This giant agro-industrial complex sustained the economy of a whole region for nearly four decades before it became non-operational due to industrial unrest and poor management. The closure of the plantation and the factory in 1997 led to the loss of livelihood to thousands and the region encountered a decade-long economic slump. A new era of hope arrived in 2007 when the government of Sri Lanka, together with Brown and Company PLC and LOLC Holdings PLC, formed Gal Oya Plantations Private Limited which today is an epitome of a successful public-private partnership. The government owns 51% of Galloya Plantation Limited for the land and pre-existed physical assets. The Browns LOLC Consortium infused fresh capital of over 4 billion rupees for the balance of 49% of the equity and carried the full weight of the financial risk. LOLC and Browns introduced professional management and technical expertise in all aspects of farming and processing and provided funding, saplings, fertilizer and services to the farmers to grow sugarcane in nearly 5,000 hectares of abandoned farmland. A restoration of the region's economy has made the once sleepy township of Hingurana a bustling commercial centre. A host of other businesses, such as financial services, retail, healthcare, and ancillary education, has arrived in the area. The number of people benefited by the industry's revival is unprecedented in the region. Today, the company employs 925 and engages 5,200 farmer families, thus directly impacting the lives of over 18,000. The revival of the industry has indirectly benefited many thousands more. I think that the most important thing is that the people who are living in the world are living in the world. The people who are living in the world are living in the world. The people who are living in the world are living in the world. The people who are living in the world are living in the world. The people who are living in the world are living in the world. The people who are living in the world are living in the world. The people who are living in the world are living in the world. ये प्रदेश ये अतर में मतलब उदाहरण तो माय गुरान नगरे गुरान नगरे वही लतीब भी ये वक़्त नगरे चीनों में वेलन वेलन सेल आया हाथ वेलन कोटे वासाती बुला नमूद अदे गल वेलन समागम आरंभ के रीमा समागे दहाई कोला हवेन कांग व्यापारिक प्रजावान प्रदेश ये जनता व चियालक में परिहरने केरने समाजे तुले में गल वेलन समाग Karya Watina Kamak Etibawa. The Sini Factory uria makluk ini ke kuriya mat mana ni senal. Tolil wai pala wangla ganda Sini Factory ala adi hama ana murai la makluk ni tolil adi halau urala ini di la mati di panari di la bandi awangga berita pada ganga. Ida kundu makluk kudu mati bandi ni kau ni dah halau mah ni dah niara mah. Oru sando saman ala mele la kudu manggala paramerici kundu ho kuri wai pugolim di Sini Factory ala itu di kundu ikatan. Since 2007, the company has injected over 9 billion rupees to the region's economy. That includes 2,500 million rupees paid as salaries and wages, 5,000 million rupees paid to farmers, 2,000 million rupees paid to local services providers, and 135 million rupees paid as local taxes. 
Brown's pioneered the modernization of the plantation industry in the 19th century and the mechanization of agriculture. LOLC is at the forefront of promoting financial inclusion and lifting millions out of poverty. Taking up the challenge of rebuilding Higurana Sugar, one of the largest agro-industrial complexes in Sri Lanka, is a natural extension of our ongoing nation-building efforts. We challenge conventional wisdom and prove that import substitute manufacturing is in fact feasible, commercially viable. Collaboration between public and private sector is, creates a very effective way of succeeding in businesses which involve deep community outreach. Not everyone shares the same optimism. Given the string of unsuccessful attempts to revive the business in the past, some members of the community were skeptical about the renewed attempt. <laughs> When Browns and LOLC took over the business, the factory resembled a giant junkyard. The sight of derelict and abandoned giant machinery was demoralizing and depressing. Years of neglect had rendered the factory derelict and non-functional. Farmers not willing to come back to sugarcane cultivation and they did not believe that us will be able to you know, get the factory back into the uh, operation. And getting back these 5,000 hectares of plantation back into sugarcane was not an easy task. And the main reason being that most of this land have been converted into any other crops. Research and development Karani, Uprobe the Garana, Vadak, Susumogat, Mona Wagawa, the Mona Pradesh, and Susu, and Mona Prabe, the Mona Mona Pokora, the Hondatama, a Wargo letter, Opatitara da Kwani, a Wagame of Dogahe, Avashakan, a process of Tapte, Nigatum Pawatag and Gila, a pay Shashavidia and Anumati, a paridi, a bija, Labade. Sustenance of a large scale requires the support of all the stakeholders. The collaboration and commitment of the farming community were essential to turn around the industry. However, not everyone was optimistic. The farmers' experience with the past failed attempts to rebuild the business was bitter. Parvati ka hadala, alavele tika sudda kalla, naavat lastan ad vathura ge enda bulang mudhi ad meeti ka hadala. Minisun da ghilla kuva menna api vala ke vada patanga ad pradeshi enna api tega umi ne ke. I think ski padne muli ma api tega yatharo sambandhu na. Anit kaatiya sambandh karage ani mat loku ge adlu. Apit samara vastayal jo api tega gaaga na minisun ta apit sudhu na nirdaare tega ghilla ge idar ad ghilla khata ga. Vihar viharatta na asre karage na gamey pansali hamuduru. Digamalu digante, Chelu Pansalu, Hamduru, Govio Ekro Kerala, Gavia Govia and Karnukarana, Pahadili Kerala, Never the Gallo, Vavilisamagamate, Baduna, Passe, Govio Epiliban, the Vedia Vadania, Kyomukarela, the Da Satra Vasare Sita, Mekal Parase Venate, Gallo Vavilisamagamat, take care, Woman Last Senator, May Ugahe Katandre, Ugaha Vardane Keragene, May Palatam, Sastrika Keraganiana Pata, Apita Maven Ekota, Painabava, Apita Painava. Through our action, we showed our determination in developing or rebuilding this whole organization back, which has gradually led winning the community and the employees' commitment. Galloya Plantation Limited is championing environmentally conscious manufacturing in Sri Lanka. The end-to-end -end production process is designed to deliver the most efficient use of raw materials and natural resources and to minimize carbon footprint. The operation at Galloy Plantations is usually referred to as a 360 degree green project. The energy requirement from external sources is minimal in Galloy operations. The sugarcane that is brought to the factory is crushed at the factory premises and the boiler which is used to fuel and power this uh, crushing of sugarcane uh, 
uh, is fueled by the bagasse itself. Bagasse is what, what is residue from crushing sugar cane. And once the sugar is extracted, what is left is processed as molasses. Molasses is fueled into the distillery which is built at the Galway plantations to create ethanol. The residue what is left is referred to as press mud and that again is something which cannot be released to the environment and that is used to process and create fertilizer. Independent of these operations, as a byproduct of sugar manufacture, there is carbon dioxide that is manufactured and that is something which is used in the carbonated uh, drinks industry as well as for hospitals. Sugarcane, as you probably know, is the, one of the agricultural uh, products that uses least amount of water as opposed to something like paddy. Having achieved operational and financial viability within a decade, Galway Plantation Limited is now embarking on the second wave of investment. The company will invest 3 billion rupees on new projects to generate 10 megawatts of electricity and large volumes of carbon dioxide and biofertilizer. These projects will create 1,500 direct and 15,000 indirect employment opportunities. The current management is very capable and dynamic. They will be reaching 5,000 hectares this year and the production of sugarcane will come to 400,000 tons. With that, they will produce 36,000 tons of sugar as well as ENA, which is again saving of foreign exchange for the country. Plus, the company has plans to go for the eco-friendly power generation using molasses. So with this, company can more and more contribute to the rural economy plus to the national economy by the way of import substitution and the food system. By investing in a vision of shared value creation, focusing on long-term success, galvanizing tens of thousands of people with a shared vision, promoting industry and community harmony, and building an effective private-public partnership, Gun Lawyer Plantation Limited has emerged as a shining example in Sri Lanka's business landscape. Gun Lawyer Plantation will continue its journey of creating shared value as a bellwether enterprise in Sri Lankan industry.